APIs may sound like tech jargon, but they're really the secret sauce behind everything that you do on the internet every day. In this video, I'm breaking down APIs so simply that anyone can understand them. And then we're gonna hop into N8N and go through some examples. By the end, you'll see how APIs can transform your workflows even if you're a complete beginner. Let's dive in. Okay, so today we're gonna to be understanding APIs and we're gonna have a specific tailor towards understanding APIs within N8N. N8N has a ton of integrations, so a lot of times you won't even need to use an API because they have built-in integrations for all the apps that you may use every day, like email, calendar, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff. But if you do need to access some sort of third-party API, you'll see how to do it in this video. First things first, what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's just a set of rules and protocols that allows different software applications to communicate with each other and send data back and forth, that sort of thing. Simply put, an API is what allows N8N to talk to your email, or for a calendar to talk to your N8N. So a quick real-world analogy, because everything's better with a real-world analogy, let's pretend this guy right here is you, and you want to order food at a restaurant. So think of the API as the waiter in a restaurant, you tell the waiter what you want, the waiter then communicates your order to the kitchen or to the restaurant, and then the restaurant prepares the information that you wanted, or the dish that you asked for, and then it takes the request back all the way to you and returns the food to you, or not returns, but gives you the food. So that's sort of the real world analogy. Hopefully that made sense. So we have two entities. We have you, and then we have the kitchen. And we just need a method for the two entities to be able to exchange information. That's an API. Now, why are APIs useful? APIs enable seamless integration between different software systems, like we talked about, and this allows them to share data and functionalities between each other. So this is important for building systems or applications because it allows us to leverage existing services rather than having to build things from scratch. So let's say we wanted to convert miles to kilometers. Instead of having to build out that calculation, we could just leverage a different third-party API that already does that. We could just send information to it and then wait for the response back rather than having to you know, build out that whole infrastructure from scratch. Okay, so if the concept hasn't stuck yet, let's look at some real world examples. So weather data integration. Many websites and apps display current weather information by leveraging APIs provided by weather services. So for example, a travel app may show you real time weather updates because it's fetching data from a weather API. Then we have social media sharing. So when you share a news article directly to Facebook or X from a website, you're using that social media platforms API. The API allows the website to communicate with a social media platform to post on your behalf. Then we have stuff like payment processing. You know, e-commerce sites often use payment gateways like PayPal or Stripe, and these services provide APIs that handle the complexities of payment processing. These enable the e-commerce site to securely process your transactions without handling sensitive payment information directly because they just use the API to talk to each other. Then our last real-world example, third-party logins, something you've done probably a million times, Websites often allow users to log in using their Google or Facebook accounts, and this is facilitated by the respective platform's API, which authenticates the user, grants access, without having to create a new account. Okay, moving on to API methods. This stuff may look like it's gonna get a little technical, but it's really not. You've got different methods here, and I wanted to point out that get and post are underlined. This is because 99% of the time that you are accessing some sort of API endpoint, you're going to be using a get or a post. Um, but let's break down all of them just in case. So a get is when you wanna retrieve data. So an action for this could be like, give me the current weather when you're reaching out to a weather API. And an analogy for this is just reading a book. You're just getting information. Then we have a post, which is you're sending data to um, you know, create something or get something back. You're sending information. So an action would be, here's policy information. And an analogy for this would be, you're sending a letter. Then we've got put which is if you wanna update existing data, so you would be replacing this completely, and that would be like replacing pages within a book. We've got patch, which is partially updating data, you know, just kind of patching it. You'd be tweaking this part, and that would be like editing a single word within a book or within a page. Then we've got delete, which is to remove data, obviously. The action here would just be erase this. It would be like tearing out a page out of a book. And so those are pretty much the main five methods of REST APIs, which I'll talk about REST APIs. Okay, so REST API stands for Representational State Transfer API. And it's just a way for different software systems to communicate over the web using a standard HTTP request like get, post, put, and delete. So it organizes its data into resources, which is accessible through a unique URL. And this will make a lot more sense once we get into N8N and we actually look at these URLs, but basically for every action you have, there's gonna be a different API endpoint, which is just the URL that you would see up top when you're like typing something into Google. 
there's gonna be different parameters at the end of them based on what type of action you wanna take. Like I said, it'll make more sense when we get into it. Anyways, REST APIs are stateless, which just means that each request is independent. They follow consistent patterns, which makes them really simple and scalable. And also they're widely supported for different integrations across various platforms. Now we're gonna get into some examples within N8N. And this is really crucial because APIs play such an important role when you're sort of automating workflows. For example, you could have a workflow that triggers when you receive an email, which would be using the email services API to get information back from that email provider. Then you could process the content, and then if you want to store it into a database, you would be sending a post request to that database's API in order to send information to the database from NNN. So this interconnectedness allows for efficient automation, integrating different services, and really removing the manual touch point out of that process. So like I said, understanding APIs is very fundamental for creating effective workflows. And once you get a good understanding of it, the possibilities of what you can do in NNN are truly endless. Okay, so for example, number one, we're gonna be sending a Git request to open weather map API. So we're going to be asking for information back about the current weather in some sort of city. So in NNN, when you wanna access an API endpoint, you're gonna do that through an HTTP request node. So you can see that we have that right here. If you come into the plus button and type in HTTP, you can see HTTP request. So that's what we've got set up right here. If we click into it, we can see that we have a method. So our method here is git, because like I said, we want to access this URL of open weather map and we wanna get information back. So anytime that you're accessing a third party API, you want to look at the documentation for that API. The documentation are gonna show you the different endpoints, it's gonna show you the different parameters, and it's gonna show you the way that you can make the request to either get the information you want or send the information you want. So what we're looking at right here is the open weather map APIs documentation. So as you can see, what we wanna do is call current weather data, this is showing us how to make an API call. This is the API endpoint that we need. And then it's showing us parameters to send off in our request. So the first thing you notice is that we have three required parameters. We have the latitude, the longitude, and the app ID, which is just, we need to enter in an API key basically to um, let Open Weather Map know that we have access to this information. So um, you can see this is the, the information that we need. So we copy this link. We put this within our URL and you can see I filled in the latitude, the longitude, and I filled in the API key. So based on this information, that's the stuff that's required. And then we also see that there's optional fields. So you could um, select the mode, you could select the units. And so what I did was I grabbed the units. It's a parameter that we're putting in and I wanted the units to be shown imperial. So in here, you can see we have, um, here actually, let me just make this a little bigger. So we have lat right there. 41, we have longitude, which is 87. We have units, which I put imperial, and then we have our app ID, which is just our API key. And so if you wanna follow along, you'll go to open weather, make an account, um, and then when you go to your account up here, you'll click on my API keys, and then you'll copy this value right here, and that is what's gonna go in the API key section of this endpoint request. So now that I've filled in this information, we will hit test step, and you can see that we get um, the information back. And this is all the information I put in the latitude and longitudes of Chicago. And so this was our request. It successfully went through. We sent that off to open weather map and then it came back to us with information. So then all I did was I just hooked up a message model to um, summarize that information we're getting um, just so we can show it in a clean format. So basically we sent off that request and then we end up getting hello there in lovely Chicago today. The sky is draped in cozy overcast clouds, um, calm and soft vibe um, about 48.9 degrees Fahrenheit, the air is humid, 53%, gentle breeze, blah, blah, blah. So um, that's all that's going on here. Real quick, just wanted to say that this workflow, as you can see, we're gonna be running through some different examples, but this workflow will be available for download in my free school community. Link for that will be down in the description. If you wanna go a little farther with N8N, you wanna hop on live weekly calls with me and members of the community, check out my paid community, also will be linked down below. And then if you're looking for me to help you build out this sort of stuff in your business or AI consulting, then book a call on my website, which is also linked down below. But let's get back to the video. Um, so what I wanted to show you here is, yes, we just accessed Open Weather Map API and we got the weather. But what's really cool is that NNN obviously has a ton of integrations. So they actually have an integration for Open Weather Map API. You come in here, um, this is where you put your API key, you create a credential. Um, our operation is we're looking for weather, we have a format, we can select the location. So this is doing the exact same thing that we just did within our HTTP request. As you can see, we're getting back the exact same information for Chicago, but it just made it a lot easier because 
we have like drag and drop fields or not drag and drop. We have collapsible fields that we can just choose information from rather than having to configure an HTTP request with different parameters and different credentials. So most of the time, um, NADN is gonna have a lot of integrations, but that's why I said, if you need to access some sort of third party API, you'll go to the docs and then you'll just have to read about how you configure your request. Okay, example number two, we're gonna do another Git request and we're using JSON placeholder API, which is just a free REST API online where you can just you know test out how it works when you wanna get information back. So if we go to JSON placeholder documentation, we can see um, you know, the, the specs that we need. So this is, the, um, this is the API endpoint we're accessing, HTTPS JSON placeholder .com. And so that's the endpoint that we wanna access. And then from there, we have different things that we can do. So if we put slash posts after it, we'll get 100 posts. If we put slash comments after it, we'll get 500 comments. So let's go back in here. You can see right now, all I did is just I, ha I just have the base um, URL and we'll hit test step and we're gonna get a ton of random HTML that's just not very um, readable or in important to us. So as you remember in here, we can see there's different resources we can access within JSON placeholder. So if we wanna grab slash posts, we throw this at the end of our API endpoint that we're trying to access. Now we have a new unique um, REST API. We'll hit test step. And now we can see we got a hundred items and we basically just got a hundred posts of gibberish. As you can see, this is all just fake information. Hopping back into the placeholder, we can see that if we did a different one, we did slash comments, we're gonna get 500 comments back. We'll hop back into here, change our API endpoint that we're accessing, and now we're getting comments back. We're getting 500 comments back from JSON placeholder. So this is just an example of, you know, another way that you can set up your URL, different ways that you have different endpoints to access. Um, in this case, we didn't really have to fill in any parameters, but a lot of times you will have to do that, usually something with like an API key or, um, different information. You'll see in this next example, we're going to be sending information with a post request to get articles back. Now in this final example, I said we were gonna be doing a post request. So we're gonna be sending a request to Tavily, which is just kind of a super cool search API. We'll be sending information over as far as what we want to look for. And then it's going to go out, get that information based on the information we send it and then bring back some articles for us. So um, I'll hit this test workflow. We can see it happen real quick. We just sent off a query. It's going to search the internet based on our query and then summarize the articles for us so we can read it better. But let's hop into the actual post request. So if we go back into Tavily, um, we can see the documentation for API reference for the REST API, of course. Um, this is the base URL, as you can see. The Tavily search and extract REST API can be accessed through this base URL. So we put this base URL right here into our Tavily. And then all we had to do was add the endpoint of slash search because we are searching for a specific information. So we added that endpoint, which is a post request, and now we can see the different parameters that we need. So the two required parameters are query, which is the search query that you wanna execute within Tavily. So if you were to go to Google and you were to type in something, that's the query that we're sending to Tavily. And then of course we need an API key and that's also required. And then we have optional things. So we have like max results, if you only wanna get five results back, if you only wanna get three results back, if you wanna include images, all this kind of stuff. Um, we also did, where's it, topic? So for topic, we could put general or news. And so I went in there and put news and I'll show you guys this. So query, API, key, topic, and I think we also maybe include max results. But here is our post request. So we're sending over our API key, of course, that just basically gives us access to hit this third party API. If I didn't put this in, it would just deny our request. The query, we're looking for top trends in AI. We wanted to put topic equals news, and then we also put max results equals three. So we're gonna be getting really relevant news articles from Tavily, and it's also gonna only give us three results because this is the information we're sending it to actually go make that request, and then it's gonna send us the results back. So. Um, as you can see, we already got we already had this executed. So then we had OpenAI take those articles and summarize them for us, just so it's easier for us to read. As you can see, we got three articles back. Actually, let me show you in here. It's a little easier to see. Right here, we have URL one, URL two, URL three. So those are the three articles we got back. And then we just had it summarize it for us. So. Um, the articles collectively emphasize the pervasive impact of artificial intelligence across various sectors, highlighting its transformative role. The first article explains blank. The second article discusses blank. The third article, lastly, the third article previews the blah, blah, blah. Okay, so as you can see, it took those three articles, 
and summarize them. But the main point was just that we sent off this request about AI. Um, we wanted news and we wanted three results and that's how it came back for us. Now that we understand what APIs are, I just wanted to touch on how cool it is that NADN has so many integrations. So something like Gmail, if we wanted to send a message, we have this right here that we can configure. All we have to do is set up the two, the subject, the message, and the operation, rather than setting up an HTTP request where we're accessing Gmail. And then within Gmail, we're accessing an endpoint to send a message. And then within that endpoint, we're setting up parameters of who's going to, what's the subject, what's it gonna say, um, all that kind of stuff. Same thing with Airtable, Sheets, Calendar, and all of these other apps that you can take action in, in NADN, which there's just a ton of integrations, all of these, if they didn't have these integrations where you could just go in and really easily configure what you're looking for, you'd have to set up an HTTP request with different endpoints and different parameters. So it's really cool that they have all these integrations, but it's good to understand that when you're doing these things, all you're doing is you're making an HTTP request to, or you're sorry, you're making an, a request to an endpoint, an API endpoint. So it's really good to understand that. And the three main benefits here are, these are really easy to use. It's gonna save you a lot of time and it's gonna save you a lot of errors because you know, when you get into the documentation of looking at API endpoints, you may have a few headaches as far as um, your API key had an extra space in it, so it didn't work, or your parameters weren't configured correctly, stuff like that. So these integrations are um, really lifesavers. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. Like I said, if you wanna get in here and just play around with these examples I made, the workflow will be available for download in the free school community, linked in the description. But I really appreciate you guys making it all the way to the end of this one. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, it definitely helps me out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.